Hi, I'm teacher Chelsea and last month I wasn't feeling too good. I had a runny nose, I was tired, and I kept on sneezing. It wasn't fun at all. And I wasn't too sure what was wrong with me. Was it a common cold or was it a little more serious like the flu? But fortunately, my doctor was able to check out my symptoms to help me find out if I had the flu or a common cold and provide me with the medication that I needed to get better. So, what is the difference between the flu and a common cold? First, let's discuss each infection individually to find out. Let's begin with the common cold and what exactly it is. A cold is an infection of the upper respiratory system. That's your nose and your nostrils, including your nasal cavity and sinuses, and also your mouth, throat, and voice box, which is also known as your larynx. Colds are viral, which means they're caused by a virus, the rhinovirus specifically. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't have anything to do with the rhinoceros, but the rhinovirus is part of the picornavirus family. Picornavirus is the name for a group of viruses, and when I say picornavirus family, we mean huge family. There are currently 110 species of viruses in the picornavirus family. Ugh, imagine those Christmas dinners with that huge viral family. Ooh. <laughs> well, the rhinoceros virus, uh, oh, I mean the rhinovirus, is the most common cold virus. This is because it can easily get into the protective lining of our nose and throat, which can cause symptoms such as an itchy or sore throat, headache, sneezing, and congestion, which is when your nose is all stuffy and it's hard to breathe out and in. Huh. Have you ever wondered why you sneeze? You sneeze because your nerves can feel the irritation in your nose and get the lungs to blast out air through your nose and mouth at about 100 miles an hour in the form of a sneeze. Wow, that's fast. Cars on the road don't normally even drive that fast. The common cold is also contagious, especially in the first two to four days after you get your first sign of symptoms. Colds are the most common infectious disease in the United States, and that's why they call it the common cold. Colds spread through contact between people or by breathing in the virus through droplets in the air. How do these droplets get into the air? Well, when someone with a cold sneezes or coughs, the virus particles can travel up to 12 feet through the air. So if the sixth person doesn't cover their mouth, the common cold can spread very easily. And another way for someone to catch a common cold is by touching their mouth or nose after touching a contaminated surface where those invisible virus droplets landed. That means so many surfaces could be contaminated and you wouldn't even know it. And that's why it's so important to always wash your hands and cover your mouth and nose when you cough or sneeze. These virus particles can sometimes survive on indoor surfaces for a few days. That's a long time. And although as each day passes, the virus's ability to cause infection lowers. But this is why the common cold is so, well, common. It can get passed on very easily, and you can catch a cold during any time of the year. But they're the most common in the winter or during rainy seasons. Did you know that in the course of a year, People in the U.S. suffer 1 billion colds. Adults get colds every now and then, but kids can catch 8 colds per year or more. 
And this is because young children haven't built up the immunity needed for the more than 100 different cold viruses that are all around. But according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 22 million school days are lost annually in the United States because of kids staying home with the common cold. And did you know that more than 200 viruses can cause colds? Fortunately, your body already has the best defense against colds, which is your immune system. The immune system protects your body against viruses. Your white blood cells work extra hard to protect you from getting really sick. So you know what? Take that, viruses! Um, but when you do catch a cold, the symptoms usually appear two to three days after your initial exposure to the source of the infection. The first signs that you have a common cold are usually a funny feeling in your throat kind of like a tickle. Also, you might have a runny or stuffy nose with some sneezing on the side. The stuff coming out of your nose, which is called mucus, might be yellow or green in color instead of its usual clear. Usually, you don't need to go to the doctor with a cold, as the symptoms clear up on their own, usually after a week. But you can take medication to help ease your symptoms, but medication won't actually cure a cold. What will also help ease your symptoms is getting plenty of rest and drinking lots of water. Maybe you could also try chicken soup. Well, there's actually no hard proof chicken soup is the cure of the cold, but people absolutely swear by it. And this is because cooked chicken has a mucus thinning amino acid called cysteine. And what's one thing you get when you have a cold? A lot of mucus coming out of your nose. So chicken soup sounds helpful and also pretty yummy. Normal cold symptoms are mild, but you should call your doctor, however, if you're coughing up a lot of mucus, if you have shortness of breath, if you're extremely tired all the time, if you can't keep food or liquids down, or if you have a high fever, and if you have a severely painful throat. Your doctor won't be able to tell you the specific virus that is causing your cold symptoms, but they can closely examine your throat and ears to make sure the symptoms aren't from another condition that may need treatment. If symptoms get worse instead of better after a few days or so, the condition you have might not be the common cold, but instead it could be strep throat, sinusitis, pneumonia, an ear infection, or bronchitis, but those are extremely rare. Now let's learn about the flu. Flu is short for influenza. The flu is a contagious respiratory illness caused by influenza viruses that infect the nose, throat, and sometimes the lungs. Influenza viruses are divided into four types, strain A, B, C, and D. The flu virus was first identified in the 1930s, and scientists classified it into those three strains. Type A is the most common and most severe form of the flu. Wild birds are usually the carrier of type A, and this strain is constantly evolving and is generally responsible for large flu epidemics like the swine flu. Type B is milder and less common. It's estimated that strain A infections make up 75% of confirmed seasonal influenza infections overall, while strain B infections account for the remaining 25%. Type C viruses usually don't cause large-scale epidemics, but are known to infect mainly humans, but also dogs and pigs. 
and type D viruses mainly occur in cattle and are not known to infect humans. The flu can cause mild to severe illnesses and on some rare occasion lead to death, especially for people over the age of 65, newborn babies, and people with certain chronic illnesses. Each year, millions of Americans get sick with the flu. Some people who get the flu will develop complications such as bronchitis, ear infections, sinus infection, and pneumonia. The flu can also make chronic health problems worse. For example, people with asthma may have asthma attacks while they have the flu. And if people with diabetes and heart disease catch a severe case of the flu, it may be bad for their overall health. Symptoms that you may experience while having the flu are a high fever, chills, body aches, cough, sore throat, runny or stuffy nose, fatigue, headaches, and even sometimes vomiting and diarrhea. Your doctor can figure out if you have the flu through a swab test, and this is when they swab the back of your throat or your nose and test for the flu viruses. Some tests are quick and give you results in 15 to 20 minutes. But like the common cold, many people can recover from the flu at home without medical care. But those who are in high risk groups, such as seniors or babies, or those with underlying medical conditions should seek out medical care. If your flu is severe instead of mild, your doctor may prescribe you antiviral medicines to help you fight the infection. But the best way to prevent flu is by getting a flu vaccination each year and by practicing good hygiene. The flu spreads the same way the cold does, through invisible droplets spread through by sick people coughing and sneezing. Flu viruses can survive in the air for several hours especially at lower temperatures, and on hard surfaces, they can survive and remain infectious for 24 hours. Wow, that's a long time. So, now we know what the common cold is and what the flu is, but what are the key differences between the two? Although they share many of the same symptoms and are both respiratory illnesses, they are both still very different. The cold is caused by the rhinovirus and tends to have milder symptoms than the flu. Colds are also less likely to cause serious complications. The flu is caused by influenza viruses and can be much worse than the common cold. Because these two types of illnesses have similar symptoms, it can be difficult to tell the difference between them based on just their symptoms alone. In general, the flu is worse than the common cold, and symptoms are much more intense. Flu symptoms include fever or having body chills, sore throat, coughing, runny or stuffy nose, muscle or body aches, tiredness, and headaches. Cold symptoms are a much milder variation of those symptoms, and you normally don't have body chills or aches. People with colds are more likely to just have a runny or stuffy nose. Colds generally don't result in serious health problems, but catching the flu can sometimes result in medical issues such as pneumonia. Special tests that usually must be done within the first few days of illness can tell if a person has the flu. And there are three key differences between comparing the flu and the common cold. The first is the onset. The flu comes on quickly, while a cold develops gradually, usually with a sore throat or runny nose. The second is fever. A common cold rarely includes a fever of more than 101 degrees. Flu symptoms, however, usually include an initial fever, cough, body and muscle aches, and are also more common when you have the flu. And the Third is the timing. 
flu season generally lasts from fall to spring of next year, and the common cold is, well, common. Now we know the key differences between the common cold and the flu. So remember to wash your hands and please cover your coughs and sneezes. I hope you stay healthy everyone and I will see you next time. Bye bye! We are thrilled that you're watching Blue Studios 24 7. We're so excited to bring round the clock entertainment and educational content to your home. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest videos. At Blue Studios, we aspire to revolutionize the way families spend time together. We empower families by providing them with tools to work together, earn and learn, and achieve new heights of success. Visit www.bluestudios.io to discover more about our mission and how we empower families to succeed. Thank you so much for being part of our community. Keep watching and learning with us. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button.